بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا فزاء نعلومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Alhamdulillah, we have Tawfiq to continue our study of second halqa on Ilmul Usul by the late Ayatollah Shahid Satr. Scan has completed. We said that. Warning. Advanced Mac Cleaner has we detected issues that there need are your immediate attention. Five types of Click on ah, clean now here. to fix these issues. There are five types of Ahkam Taklifiya. Al Wuju. Walhurma, these two are ilzami, means it's a matter of necessity, you have no choice. Istihbab wal kiraha is recommendation. Istihbab means you are recommended to do, kiraha is recommended not to do, but still, if you don't observe it, it's okay in the sense that you have not committed a sin. Then we said that we have ebaha. When we were explaining ebaha, we said ebaha is used in two different ways. Ebaha sometimes means one of those five rulings, one of those five ahkam taklifi. So something which is not wajib, which is not mustahab, not haram, not makro. It's ebaha. And sometimes ebaha is used for something which is not ilzami. So it can include istihbab and kiraha and ebaha in its narrower sense. Okay? Then we said ebaha is sometimes iqtidai and sometimes la iqtidai. What does it mean? Sometimes there is a melak, a basis, a criterion for ebaha. This is iqtidai. In the same way that sometimes the basis is for wujub, for hurma, for istihbab and karaha, sometimes we have a reason for ebaha. But sometimes Ebaha is because we don't have any reason to make it obligatory or recommended. Okay? Salam alaikum. In other words, sometimes there is melak, maslaha, in leaving people free to choose. Sometimes because there is no reason to make it mustahab or haram or wajib or makruh, we say it is mubah. It's not that there is a reason specifically that suggests this should be mubah. It's lack of reason for other things. So if you look at the paragraph that we ended last session, wal ibahatu. قد تنشأ عن خلو الفعل المباح من أي ملاك يدعو إلى الإلزام فعلا أو تركا إباحة sometimes originates from the permissible act lacking any criterion, any basis which would demand obligation, other obligation for doing or not doing. There is no basis for saying that this is obligatory. Okay? So lack of reason for Elzam. But sometimes and Wujud Melakin. But sometimes there is a basis for leaving the person who is mukallaf free. So we have reason for leaving free. We have reason for having option. 
Not that we don't have reason to make it compulsory. You understand? So, milakuha alal awal. Based on the first scenario, it's la iqtadai. Means there is nothing to demand, to de deserve elzam. Wa ala thani, but the basis for ibaha in the second scenario is iqtadai. Means we have reason for ibaha. Okay? Are there any examples of this? So, so sometimes I tell you are free because I want you to be free. Sometimes I say you are free because there is no reason to make it obligatory. So we have to find out what is suitable for that context. After this, we have a new title. At-Tadad Bain Al-Ahkam Taklifiyah. One of the things that you have to remember is these five hukm taklifi wujub, hurma, ibaha, kiraha, nadb, or istihbab they cannot apply to the same thing because as you remember you know, in mantiq when we were talking about taqabul one type of taqabul was tadat two things which are opposite to each other we said Amran wujudiyan la yatawaradan ala mawdu'an wahid. Tazad is the relation between two opposing things that cannot be together in the same thing. For example, two things cannot be, uh, sorry, one thing cannot be black and white. One person cannot be blind and able to see both of them. Okay? This is Tazad. So, can something be wajib and haram? Can something be wajib and mustahab? Or wajib and mubah? Or mubah and makru? None of these five can be applicable to something which has already the other one. Okay? Is it clear? Because Milak for wujub is different from milak for khurma or karaha or istihba. You remember we said every hawk is based on milak and then based on milak we have irada and then we have i'tibar. Milak and hawk, sorry, milak and irada for wujub is different. Because we said wajib is something that you must have it for your sa'adah, without which you cannot have sa'adah. So how can something be both wajib and mustahab, or wajib and haram? It's not possible. Okay? So, وَحِينَ نُلَاحِظُ أَنْوَاعَ الْحُكْمِ التَّكْلِيفِ الَّتِي مَرَّتْ بِنَا When we consider Different types of hukm taklifi which passed. Najadu anna baynaha tanafiyan wa tawaddan. We find that among them, between them, there is tanafi wa tawad. There is kind of opposition, a kind of conflict. Means they cannot be together. يؤدي, which leads to استحالة اجتماع نوعين منها في فعل واحد. It's impossible that two of them come together in one type, one action. ومرد هذا التنافي. This opposition goes back to what? مرد means Return, yeah. So this returns to At-Tanafur Bayna Mabadi Tilka Al-Ahqam Foundations of these five are different. And we mean by foundation here Al-Milak Wal-Irada I'tibar is possible. We don't discuss that much about I'tibar. Even you remember we said some people may not 
consider i'tibar as part of the mabadi. I'tibar is that the legislator, the lawmaker, shari' after considering milak and developing veil and desire for it, consider it as an obligation or, I don't know, prohibition, whatever. I'tibar is not a problem. Because you can do i'tibar of two things at the same time, which are different. From one aspect, you can say it is wajib. From another aspect, you can say it is haram. But it's impossible that milak would be more than one. And irada be more than one. Amma ala mustawal i'tibar faqat on the basis at the level of i'tibar la yujad tanafur there is no conflict is la tanafiya bayna al-i'tibarat idha jurdat an al-milak wal irada if you separate i'tibar from milak and irada there is no problem for example Maybe something in the knowledge of Allah as hukm waqi is wajib. It's wajib. But we don't have any reason to prove that. So we say it's mubah. You have qa'idi yaqub haqab bila bayan. So on the one hand it is wajib, on the other hand it is permissible and you can leave it. So how can there be two hook? We say there can be two hook because one is hukm waqi, one is hukm zahiri. But in reality, there cannot be two hook because the milak, the basis, is either for this or that. It cannot be for both. <coughs> can you sorry? Can you repeat what is milak? Milak in his other please. Check your language. Milak is the reason for which the law is made criterion why we make salat wajib what's milak for wujub because it is needed for our happiness for nearness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala irada is the desire and the will which is produced in master after considering milak when the master finds that this is necessary for our happiness, then he wants it, he desires it. Of course, in human beings, when they become masters, sometimes it's for good for themselves because they want something for themselves. But in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's only for us. You have a question? Question? Yeah. Yes. Um, how would you answer someone that said that the account that we have, all of them are just our understanding of what Allah has said or something like that, rather than what the, the real ruling is. <clears throat> yes, uh, but our understanding is discovering of what is real. So what is real, sometimes you are sure that it is understood. Sometimes you follow rules, even if you are not sure. If you have certainty, then this distinction doesn't work. You are sure that this is the ruling of Allah. For example, is anyone in doubt that Salat is wajib? No. You cannot say, Hukm waqi is completely hidden from us. No. Many times we are 100% sure what is Hukm waqi. But sometimes we are not 100% sure. There is Khabar Wahid that tells me you should do like this. I cannot say, Wallahi, this is hukm waqi. So, hukm waqi is there. Our understanding is sometimes matching hukm waqi, sometimes may not match, sometimes we are 100% sure, sometimes we are not 100% sure. But what is important is that you should always follow a clear methodology, something that gives you hujjah. Even if you make mistake, you have excuse. Following Khabar Wahid is Hujjah. Following Zahir uh, uh, text is Hujjah. 
even if you are not 100% sure. But there are cases that we are 100% sure. We are not even to the least able to doubt that fasting in the months of Ramadan is obligatory. Everyone knows that. We should not eat and drink. Everyone knows that. So some of the ahkam waqai are known for sure. Some are discovered based on hujjah that we have. Yes. Jurrada. Is it separated? Yes. Kadalik. Okay. In the same way that you cannot have wuju and hurma or hurma and istihbab or kiraha and wuju, you cannot have two hawk of the same type even. For example, you say there is something that has two wuju, two hurma. That is not also possible. Because these are the things that would not be applying twice on the same thing. كَذَلِكَ إِذَا لَا يُمْكِنْ أَنْ يَجْتَمِعَ فِي فِعْلٍ وَاحِدٍ فَرْدَانِ مِنْ نَوْعٍ وَاحِدٍ It is also impossible that in the single action, in the same action, two types or two instances of the same type come. فَمِنَ الْمُسْتَحِيلِ أَنْ يَتَّسِفَ شَيْءٌ وَاحِدٌ بِوُجُوبَيْنِ It is impossible that the same thing can be characterized with two wujub. Why? لَأَنَّ ذَلَكَ يَعْنِي اجْتِمَاعَ إِرَادَتَيْنِ عَلَى مُرَادٍ وَاحِدٍ Because this means that we have two wheels for the same thing. You wheel something twice. وهو من قبيل اجتماع المثلين. Can a human being be two human beings? It's impossible. لأن الإرادة لا تتكرر على شيء واحد. We cannot have two parallel إرادة. إرادة is not repeated for the same thing. Yes, you can have. A stronger irada. If there is more reason for wujub, then the wheel becomes stronger. But you cannot have two parallel or two independent wheels. Inna taqwa or taqwa, taqwa means taqwa or you know like becomes stronger. What hashtad? وَالْمَحْضُورُ هُنَا إِذَنْ بِلْحَاظِ الْمَبَادِ لَا بِلْحَاظِ الْإِعْتِبَارِ Again, when we say you cannot have two cases, two instances of ahkam for the same thing, the problem is in milak and irada. Itibar is easy. The next issue that you have to remember is there is nothing in our life, nothing that is about our voluntary actions unless it is addressed in Sharia. We don't have any action, any area of activities, area of life which is neglected by Sharia. Anything that we do as voluntary action, it's either wajib or haram or mubah or mustahab or makruh. Means Sharia has addressed it. Shumul al hukm shari li jami'i waqa'i al hayat. Religious ruling includes and embraces all events and incidents of life. لَمَّا كَانَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَالِمًا بِجَمِيعِ الْمَصَالِهِ وَالْمَفَاسِدِ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of all the interests and harms الَّتِي تَرْتَبِتُ بِحَيَاتِ الْإِنسَانِ which relate to the life of human being في مختلف مجالاته الحياتية in different aspects of life so Allah knows all masalih and mafasid then wouldn't his grace and lot favor and grace require that he would help us by telling us what to do what not to do yeah 
if you remember, we had this discussion in, I think, Baba Hadi Ash and Usul that, pardon, that uh, taklif is lotf. Taklif by itself is lotf. Pardon? Imama is lot, Nabubba is lot, but also Taklif is lot. Because it's like you have a very good doctor. If doctor tells you what to eat, what not to eat, it's a lot. Yeah? Or if you have a great, for example, driving instructor. Tells you how to drive, how not to drive. It's a lot. Those who are not generous and kind will ignore you. Say, you know, let him make mistake and then he will learn by himself. But that is a job, sir. Pardon? That is a job. Who? Whoever, the doctors or the driving instructors. Either his job or sometimes even without payment. Indeed. If you are a good doctor, even when you are in your own private time, you help people. Even if they are not able to pay you, you help them. Yes. Yes. Those who really love their job, they don't need payments. Maybe as a practical you know, measure, they need to receive salary. But it's not that because of salary they help people. It's very important. The same is with teacher, alim. Maybe sometimes you have to receive money, but you should not teach for money. Yeah? If you teach for the sake of money, then you are losing. So, because Allah is aware of all masalih and mafasid, which relate to our life in different aspects. فَمِنَ الْلُطْفِ اللَّائِقِ بِرَحْمَتِهِ So it is from His grace and favor which suits His mercy and يُشَرَّعَ لِلْإِنسَانِ التَّشْرِيعَ الْأَفْضَلِ to make the best legislation for us. وَفْقًا لِتِلْكَ الْمَصَالِهِ وَالْمَفَاسِدِ based on those interests and harms fi shatta jawanib al hayat in different aspects of life and this is very important one of the things that we should try to pass on to students to children is to help them understand that sharia is not a burden mm. Sharia is guidelines for success. If you are a good driver and you have been trained properly, you don't think traffic regulations are burden. You don't think red light or you know zebra lines are burden. If one day there is no traffic light, you would say this is a, going to be a bad day. <laughs> because we are not going to have a smooth traffic. So Sharia is not to bring restriction and burden and pain. Sharia is to help us move without hitting other people, <laughs> without having accidents and casualties. So we should try to understand and make children understand that Sharia is Lutf. Divine commands are Lutf. Of course, the jurists and ulama also have to explain it in the way that it is Lutf. Yeah? We shouldn't make Sharia more difficult than it is. It's like when someone wants to drive, you say always, you know, you have to drive a slow, a slow, a slow, a slow. Then people say, no, I hate driving. You are making me <laughs> lose my interest in driving. So those people who make halal of har Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala haram, they are not doing any favor. 
making haram halal is a problem making also halal haram is a problem yeah if you want to do ihtiyat do it for yourself <laughs> don't make people forced to do ihtiyat you can say this is what you can do if you want to do ihtiyat but let them decide to do ihtiyat not that you make ihtiyat and then for them you make it obligatory do you understand the difference? Mm -hmm. وَقَدْ أَكَّدَتْ ذَلِكَ النُّسُوسُ كَثِيرَةِ وَرَدَتْ أَنْ أَئِمَّةَ عَلِهِ أَهْلِ الْبَيْتِ عَلِهِمُ السَّلَامِ This has been confirmed and emphasized on by many texts received from Imams of Ahlul Bayt. May peace be upon them. And you have reference in Usul al Kafi, Volume 1, Kitabu Fadl al Il, Babu Radd il al Kitabi wa Sunnah. Wa Khula Satuha. The summary of these Nusus, these texts is An al Waqi'ah la Takhlu min Hok. There is no incident unless it has a ruling. Islamic Sharia is comprehensive. The next thing is al hukm al waqi wa al hukm al zahiri If you remember in usul al fiqh in previous levels we said sometimes hukm is waqi sometimes is zahiri but zahiri it has two meanings Ayatullah Sa'd rahmatullah alayhi Instead of saying Zahiri has two meanings, he says there are two types of Zahiri. So this is something that uh, later we should discuss with Shaykh Satr, mm -hmm. whether it is two types or two meanings. Mm -hmm. He prefers to call it <laughs> two types. So al hukmul waqi according to him, is what is in the knowledge of God the ruling, the real primary ruling. For example, is Salatul Jum'ah in the time of Ghayba wajib ta'ini or takhiri or we shouldn't do it? There is a ruling. Definitely there is a ruling. In the knowledge of God, there is a ruling. We cannot say it has no ruling. But Sometimes you know that ruling, sometimes you don't know that ruling. For example, there is khabar wahid, there is a reliable narrator, thiqah, honest, who says that Imam Sadiq salam, for example, said this. Or there is a hadith and the ma'na zahiri for that hadith is that this is wajib, for example. So this is hukm al-zahiri, means you are not sure, but you have hujjah, you have a valid proof to believe in this, but you are not 100% sure. It's like the parent ruling? Like? The parent ruling? The parent ruling? This is called apparent ruling. Or you may have doubt and then you apply usul amaliyyah. For example, you don't know whether it is wajib or not, you say as is not to have obligation. Yeah? As salatul bara. Or you don't know whether the previous condition has changed or not, you do as salatul istishab, as salatul baqa. So, hukm zahiri has two types. One is the one in which Doubt about hukm waqi'i is there and you only want to understand your practical duties. Another one is that when you have amara, means there is a way to discover the primary ruling but not 100%. It's a valid way but not 100%. So if you look at the text, 
الحکم الواقعی و الحکم الظاهری ریل رولنگ ان اپارنت رولنگ ینقسم الحکم الشرعی الى واقعی و ظاهری ریلیجیس رولنگ از دیوائدن انتو تو ریل ان اپارنت فالحکم الواقعی هو ریل رولنگ از دیس كل حكم لم يفترض في موضوعه الشك في حكم شرعي مسبق Any ruling in whose subject doubt in a previous religious ruling is not assumed So it's not that doubt is part of the mozu. Lam, I repeat, Lam yuftarad fi mawdu'ahi ashakku fi hukman shar'iyan. In its subject, the subject of hukm, there is no doubt with respect to the religious ruling taken as subject. الحکم الظاهری از اپوزیت هو کل حکم افترض فی موضوعی اشک و فی حکم شرعی مصبق از اینی رولنگ این هوز سابجک داوت این پریویس ریلیجیس رولنگ از تاکن لیک وات فر حکم ظاهری من قبیل اصالت الحل أصالة الحلية في قوله كل شيء لك حلال حتى تعلم أنه حرام So what is halal according to this? Pardon? Not, no, no, no. Everything is not halal. Everything that you have doubt about its Horma, it's halal. So the subject is not everything. Everything you have doubt about it, it's halal. Okay? So shak is part of mozu. About his horma, everything about his... Yes. Everything that you have doubt about its permissibility, whether it is permissible or not permissible, it's permissible. You only stop if you know that this is haram. Okay? كل شيء لك حلال حتى تعلم أنه حرام. وسائر الأصول العملية الأخرى. Other practical principles. كل شيء لك طاهر حتى تعلم أنه نجس. This is also about Out. Another type وَمِنْ قَبِيلَ أَمْرِهِ This is different from the first. أُسُولَ عَمَلِيَةِ is when you have doubt. Then we are talking about أَمَارَات like خَبَرِ وَاحِد وَمِنْ قَبِيلَ أَمْرِهِ بِتَصْدِيقِ الثِّقَةِ when شَارِ commands us to تصدیق تصدیق میشه تو افر از ثقه when an uh, honest and reliable person says something you should accept و العمل على وفق خبره you should act according to his information his narration so شاره commands us to affirm the person who is ثقه to endorse and to act according to his narration wa amri and also like share asking us to affirm other amarat amara is a sign is different from usul amaliya amara is not based on having doubt amara is a way to understand hukm waqi but it's not guaranteed it's not 100% Most of Amarat are Zunun, Zunun Mu'tabare. 
They produce one, but valid one. Pardon? Indicated. Signs. وَعَلَى هَذَا الْأَسَاسِ يُقَالُ Based on this, it is said about أحكام الظاهرية بِأَنَّهَا مُتَأَخِرَةٌ رُتْبَةً عَنِ الْأَحْكَامِ الْوَاقِعِيَّةِ أحكام الظاهرية are coming after أحكام الواقعية They are lower in rank than احکام واقعیه why لانها قد افترض في موردها الشك في الحكم الواقعی because احکام ظاهریه are in the cases that we have doubt about حکم واقعی ولولا وجود الاحکام الواقعیه في الشریعه لما كانت هناك احکام ظاهریه had it not been that we have ahkam waqi, we would not have also had ahkam zahiri because ahkam zahiri are there when we want to know what to do in the case that hukm waqi is not known to us. <coughs> so you see how Ayatollah Sa'ad has combined two meanings of hukm zahiri. One is usul amali, when there is doubt, one is Amarat. And I am a little bit surprised, of course. Uh, he, he might be right, but I think it's better to do according to what some other scholars have done, to say these are two different meanings. Because in Amarat, doubt is not part of the subject. Amarat are directly talking about the real subject, not about a subject with doubt. You know, here, for example, it says, "Akam zahiri qad ufter zafi mordha ashak fil hukm al waqi." This is true only about usul amaliyah, not about amarat. But I might be wrong. Al amaratu wal usul. Now, he wants to explain this further. Al ahkam al zahiriya tusannaf adatan ila qismain. Apparent rulings are normally divided into two. But we say what? We say they are not divided into types. There are two meanings. But he says there are two types. Ahaduhuma al hukmu zahiri al murtabit bi kashfe dalilin dhaniyan muayyanen. على نحو يكون كشف ذلك الدليل هو الملاك التام لجعله حكم ظاهري in the sense of amarat and that is when حكم ظاهري is related to discovery of a دليل a reference which is ذني it's not يقيني if it was يقيني means you know حكم واقعي it is ذني it's a matter of speculation or suspicion and this is to discover what is really melak. So you use this as a means to reach the melak, the basis. Kal hukm zahiri be wujub tasdiq khabar thaqah. When we discuss khabar wahid, we say that you must follow the narration of thaqah. والعمل على تبغي you must act upon it سواء كان ذلك الدليل الظني مفيدا للظن الفعلي دائما أو غالبا and when we say it is ظن معتبر maybe in your case doesn't produce ظن or even generally but overall this is put in the discussion about ظن because no an as a general way it can lead to dhan sawa un kana dhalika dalil al dhanni mufidan lil dhan al fi'li daiman always actually produce dhan or ghaliban or most of the time even if you don't have it right now 
because no e is important. Maybe you are a person that by hearing khabar wahid you don't have than. Still you have doubt. Or still you think it's more likely that this is not the case. But if most of people by hearing to uh, wahid or saqa they have than, that's enough. In such cases, that reference is called Amara. And the apparent ruling is Hujjiyah. Our lawmaker has made Hujjiyah for Amara. It's a valid and proof. Amara. Amara Sign. Al The other type is Al Hukmu Zahiri Al Ladi Ukhida Fiya Bain Al Atibar No Ul Hukmil Mashkuk. The apparent meaning that we have taken into consideration the type of ruling which is doubted. But this has also two types. This is very important. I hope you have all attention here. This is a very important time. Sawa'un lam yu'khaz ayyu kashfin mu'ayyan bi'ayn al-i'tibar fi maqam ja'alihi aw ukhidha walakin la binahbin yakunu huwa al-milaku al-tam. Either it's not totally or it's not at all a matter of discovering or it is a matter of discovering, but not sufficiently, not completely. Maybe if you listen to the example, it's clearer, then we can read the text. For example, when you say, Kullu shay'an laka halal hatta ta'rif annahu haram, does it mean that it shows that it is in reality halal, or more likely to be halal, or this is a way to establish halal? No. Whether it is halal or haram in reality, this rule works the same way. I repeat. Whether in reality this is halal or haram, the rule works the same way. But amara is different. Amara may not be proof, 100% proof, but amara is somehow trying to indicate reality. Kullu shayin like a halal doesn't say anything about reality. But when khabar wahid says something, you have more reason to believe in this than doubting it. Means it's telling you something about the reality. Yeah? It produces a than with respect to reality. You understand the difference? So, al hukmu zahiri الذي أخذ فيه بعين الاعتبار نوع الحكم المشكوك. The second meaning of حكم ظاهري is the one that in it the type of ruling which is doubted is taken into consideration. سواء لم يؤخذ أي كشف معين بعين الاعتبار whether no a specific discovery has been taken to consideration when it was made. Or it is taken, but it's not complete. It has to be added to something else, to the type of the doubted ruling. The one which has nothing of discovery, the, thang, the, the one that doesn't indicate anything about reality, like asalatul hil, kullu shayin laka halal. This doesn't say anything about reality. فَإِنَّ الْمَلْحُوظَ فِيهَا What is considered in this is just كَوْنُ الْحُكْمِ الْمَشْكُوكِ وَالْمَجْهُولِ مُرَدَّدًا بَيْنَ الْحُرْمَةِ وَالْإِبَاهَ The ruling which is doubted and is unknown is either hurma or ibaha. وَلَمْ يُلْحَذْ فِيهَا وُجُودُ كَشْفٍ مُعَيَّنًا عَنِ الْحَلِّيَةِ and there is no kind of indication that Hilliya is the one which was in the reality. But the second type, when it comes with cash, وَمِثَالُ الْحَالَةِ الثَّانِيَةِ قَاعِدَةُ الْفَرَاغِ 
Qa'idatul Faragh is when it's really more likely that your Salat is okay. The chance of Salat being okay is more likely. Why? Because when you were performing Salat, you were azkar. You had more attention. After completing Salat, you doubt about your Ruku or Sujood or Tashahud. But we say when you were saying your Salat, you were in a better condition. You had more awareness. Okay? So as you see here, what Amara is saying is not neutral. It's something which is more likely. Because in this Amara has the power of taking us to the reality. It's showing us the reality. وَمِثَالُ الْحَالَةِ الثَّانِيَةِ قَاعِدَةُ الْفَرَاغِ فَإِنَّ التَّعَبُّدْ فِي هَذِهِ الْقَاعِدَةِ بِصِحَّةِ الْعَمَلِ الْمَفْرُوغَ عَانِ يَرْتَبِتُ بِكَاشِفٍ مُعَيَّنٍ عَنِ السِّحَّةِ Why we have to assume that this action which we have, doubt, we have performed and now we have doubted it's sahih because there is a reality here that this is indicating. وَهُوَ غَلَبَةُ الْإِنْتِبَاهِ وَعَدَمُ النِّسْيَانِ فِي الْإِنْسَانِ The one which is more likely is that when you were aware when you were doing. You were not forgetful when you were doing. Now it's more likely that you have forgotten. وَلَكِنَّ هَذَا الْكَاشِفْ لَيْسَ هُوَ كُلَّ الْمِلَاقِ But this is not 100% because there might be Amara and still the other party, the other side is correct. بَلْ هُنَاكَ دَخْلٌ لَكَوْنَ الْمَشْكُوكِ مُرْتَبِتًا بَعَمَلٍ تَمَّ الْفِرَاقُ آن It's not 100% the basis but there is a relation and therefore uh, the lawmaker, the Shara would not ask us uh, not to forget all the time. What? Mashkuk means the one that you have doubted. What to sama al ahkam al zahiriya fi hada al qism bil usul al amaliya. This type of ahkam al zahiriya in which you have doubt, it is called usul al amaliya. Wa yutlagu al al usul al amaliya fi al halat al ula is. الاسم الأصول العملية غير المحرزة In the first type, which has nothing to discover the reality, we call it practical principles, which don't help us to establish. محرز إحراز means to establish, to protect, to safeguard. وعليها في الحالة الثانية, but for the same thing, in the second type, we say الأصول العملية المحرزة. Those that help us to establish the reality. وَقَدْ يُعَبَّرُ عَنْهَا بِالْأُصُولِ الْعَمَلِيَّةِ التَّنْزِيلِيَّةِ It is also sometimes called practical principles which are تَنْزِيلِي means they tell us something about reality. Okay, so inshallah we continue this discussion about whether it is possible or if you are okay i can read one more paragraph if you are not too tired so let's go for one more paragraph is it possible to have hukm waqi and zahiri together yes yes, yes because hukm waqi is in the knowledge of allah hukm zahiri is what is available to us yes so there can be both there بناء على ما تقدم يمكن أن يجتمع في واقعة واحدة حكمان. Based on what we have said, it's possible that for the same incident we have two rulings. أحدهما واقعي one is real والآخر ظاهري the other is apparent. For example, إذا كان الدعاء عند رؤية الهلال واجبا واقعا. Suppose that whenever you see the crescent, it's for the first time, you have to pray. Suppose this is watching. But this is in the knowledge of God. 
And suppose that our Amara, for example, the Hadith that we have, it says it is Mubah, permissible. So in the knowledge of God in this case, based on our assumption, in the knowledge of God is obligatory, but based on the Hadith that we have, it is permissible. So Hukm Zahiri is Abaha, Hukm Waqi is Wujud. Pardon? No, no, Hukm Waqi has more rank. Of course, that's the main thing, but we don't have access to it except through Zahir. So we just make it So we have to follow Hukm Zahiri. Yes. In this example, it seems like both rulings are derived from the Amara Sharia. From the Hadith, we're saying that uh, when the moon is sighted, then you have to put the white of the moon. No, that is not Hadith. Is a kind of dua in the Rayatel Hilaroyatel Wajiban Wagan? Suppose. Example, suppose that in the knowledge of God, before any hadith is said, it is wajib. But then we have a hadith from reliable person that said it's a mubah. فَحُكْمُ الشَّارِعِ بِحُجِّيَةِ الْأَمَارَةِ وَبِعَنَّ الْفِعْلَ الْمَذْكُورِ مُبَاهٌ فِي حَقِّ مَنْ يَشُكُّ فِي بُجُوبِهِ or hakam al because the hukm al or hakam al shari. Shari rules in this way, or makes the ruling in this way, that amara is hujja, and this action is mubah, if you have doubt about its wujub. Although in hukm al it is wajib, but it is not proof to you that it's wajib, you have doubt about it, and you can follow as-salatul ibaha. فَقَدْ اجْتَمَعَ حُكْمَانِ Taklifiyan ala waqa'atan wahida. So two obligation and rulings apply to the same incident. Ahaduhuma waqa'iyun wa huwa al-wujub wa al-akharu zahiriyun wa huwa al-ibar. But one of them is waqa'i, one is zahiri. You cannot have both waqa'i. Yes. I know you're giving a hypothetical example, but even in this hypothetical example, if you have the hukum waqa'i from somewhere, why is the hukm zahiri existing that? Even though you have a hadith. How you get hukm zahiri? That's the question. It's always zahiri. Because it's from hadith. Because it's from hadith or Quran. The only time that it is not zahiri is if you are dealing with a case which is badihi. That you are sure 100% that this is the ruling. Can I ask a question, please? Um, when you have to see the moon is sighted, you have to pay special remarks. It's, it's good to make dua. Namaz we have for the first night of month. Normally we have namaz. Okay. فقد اجتمع حكمان تكليفيان على واقعة واحدة. We have two obligation and rulings for the same incident. But أحدهما واقعي وهو الوجوب الآخر الظاهري وهو الإباحة. One of them is real and this is وجوب. One of them is apparent and this is إباحة. وما دام أحدهما من سنخ الأحكام الواقعية والآخر من سنخ الأحكام الظاهرية فلا محظورة في اجتماع There is no problem to have one واقعي one ظاهري but two واقعي or two ظاهري that's a problem إنما المستهيل أن يجتمع في واقعة واحدة وجوب واقعي وإباحة واقعية What is impossible is to have two hawk which are waqi'i both. One waqi'i, one zahiri is not a problem. Okay? Okay, the next issue is a little bit more difficult, although for those who have studied logic and philosophy, they remember it's not difficult. And that is the difference between al-qadiyyatul haqiqiyya wa al-qadiyyatul kharijiyya. Inshallah, we leave it for the next session. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.